So far this tournament, Brazil have lined up in the first instance with a 4-3-3, with Coutinho playing the left central midfield role and Willian on the right wing. This was one of the options used by Chichi to combat deep-sitting teams who are hard to break down, as Coutinho provides a ball-carrying and creative ability that allows him to push forwards the 10 space or the inside left area. This gives Brazil a greater ability to link play from deep as they build from the back, as well as harnessing Coutinho's shooting ability from deep. Willian plays as slightly more of a natural right wide man than Neymar, who has a far greater tendency to come inside off the right flank. This can be an issue against sides who sit deep and pack the centre, and so Willian looks to stretch play, assisted by Danilo or Fagner from right back, looking for cutbacks or longer crossfield switches to danger man Neymar, who pops up more or less where he likes. Brazil's plan B, such as it is, was shown against Costa Rica, who defended very deeply and thwarted Brazil for long periods through superb organisation, discipline and Christian Gamboa having a brilliant game against Neymar. Douglas Costa came on for Willian, adding even more pace and width, while Roberto Firmino came on for Paulinho. The Liverpool striker played as an attacking midfielder in a staggered line that saw Casemiro screening while Coutinho pushed up to give Brazil more of a Manchester City setup in possession. Brazil have played reasonably well, but they are not unbeatable, and while Serbia succumbed to two goals of great individual skill against Switzerland, themselves an excellent side, and left themselves open as they tried to get back into the game, Mladen Krstajic will believe quite rightly that his team can get something from the game. Serbia must win the midfield battle, and prevent Brazil's possession-based build-up. While Serbia defended against Switzerland in a 4-4-2, they may use a staggered 4-5-1 against Brazil, with Sergei Milinkovic-Savic trying to control the passing lane between the back four and Casemiro, while Nemanja Matic and Luka Milivojevic mark Coutinho and Paulinho. Brazil like to build from the back and create overloads between the lines, with players dropping off to show for passes, and so not only will this need to be tracked, but Serbia should look to create more than two normal lines of midfield and defence to make themselves harder to play through. Alexander Mitrovic gave Switzerland centre-backs a torrid time, especially as Dusan Tadic and Branislav Ivanovic combined well down the right-hand side. Brazil's left is their more attacking side, as Marcelo, Coutinho and Neymar occupy that flank. This means that Serbia have to strike a balance between shoring up against Brazil's best attacking players and taking advantage of the fact that, as Coutinho pushes up and in, Marcelo will overlap to support Neymar. If Tadic and Ivanovic can isolate Brazil's marauding fullback, they can exploit this. If Casemiro looks to press over to assist, then Milinkovic Savic will have room to exert an influence on the game. Of course, Serbia will also have to defend this flank as well, but attacking could be the best form of that. Milinkovic Savic will be crucial for Serbia. His height advantage over Casemiro can be exploited by Serbia with direct vertical passing from deep, just as Lazio do. His pressing can unsettle the Brazilian defensive midfielder, and if he forces Casemiro into a pass backwards, he needs to follow that up. Brazil's game plan can be greatly unsettled by targeting the central passing axes of the centre-backs and deep-dropping midfielders, and so Mitrovic and Milinkovic Savic need to do this, then effectively counter-press to maximise their scoring chances as Brazil seeks to recover. It's also worth noting that Serbia need to make sensible changes during the game. While Brazil's switches against Costa Rica made sense and worked, Serbia's in-game changes were less effective. They sacrificed solidity for attack and a slightly higher press, in part because of Milivojevic's yellow card, but played into the hands of a quick-breaking Switzerland. The same approach will play right into Brazil's hands. But, if Serbia keep it tight, exploit the areas highlighted and use set pieces effectively, they can certainly pull off an unexpected win that could throw the tournament wide open. OneFootball is the app for you. There's constantly updated news, squad information, fixture lists and all the rest. Take a look at the link in the description to find out more. Thanks for watching.